Hi and welcome as we continue with our discussion on the vagina as well as cervical infections. Today we are going to look at the differential diagnosis of all these infections and if this is the first time you are watching Bright Medical Lectures, I will encourage you to kindly subscribe to this channel for more interesting videos to come. In our previous discussions, we looked at the vagina uh, anatomy as well as its uh, physiology. Then we've seen most of the infections which may affect the vagina and the cervix. However, though most of these infections look similar, we need to be able to differentiate between them easily. And so in today's presentation, we are going to differentiate or we are going to set them apart based on their pathogenesis as well as the discharge that comes from the vagina or the cervix. Then we shall look at how we diagnose them as well as their special characteristics or features. Then we shall also see how to treat these infections by way of setting them apart. So quickly with gonorrhea, we know that the uh, causative organism is the Neisseria gonorrhea and the discharge that we see in uh, gonorrhea is usually greenish color uh, you know uh, discharge which is usually offensive and it is past like uh, discharge now with the diagnosis of gonorrhea uh, we use the nucleus nucleic acid amplification test specific for Neisseria gonorrhea now uh, with this test it is the recommended and the first best choice uh, for Neisseria uh, uh, gonorrhea. Now, we may also do culture for Neisseria gonorrhea, and uh, culture will also help us to isolate uh, the virus, or sorry, to isolate the uh, uh, bacteria using what uh, we call the Theamatin agar. We can also do arthrosynthesis. Now, the reason why we must do arthrosynthesis is that uh, we said this gonorrhea uh, can cause disseminated gonococci infection and usually uh, it has you know uh, uh, spread to uh, the joints of such patients and so we take synovia fluid and analyze it if we can find Neisseria gonorrhea in it that's why we do arthrosynthesis for these uh, women Special characteristics of uh, gonorrhea is what I just uh, alluded to. We have the clinical triad of tenosynovitis as well as septic arthritis or polyarthritis. Then also we have dermatitis. Now, the tenosynovitis uh, is when uh, we have simultaneous inflammations of several tendons of the body. It may include the fingers, the toes, the wrists, and even the ankles of these uh, you know, patients. Also, the septic or the uh, polyarthritis is mig migratory in nature and it is asymmetric and it may even become purulent in these women. Then also, the dermatitis uh, is usually vesicular. It may also be uh, postular as well as uh, presenting as uh, maculopapular lesions you know, in these women. Then we have another uh, uh, special feature of gonorrhea, which is the Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome, which is a syndrome characterized by the inflammation of the levis capsule. And uh, this inflammation usually occurs in women as a complication of the pelvic inflammatory disease which they got through this gonorrhea infection. This uh, Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome is, you know, uh, uh, characterized by fever nausea, vomiting, as well as a characteristic right upper quadrant pain, which these women usually complain of, and a pleuritic or a pleuritic chest pain. We treat gonorrhea with the triazone as a first line of treatment of uncomplicated gonorrhea. And so as the first line, we give triazone intramuscularly plus azithromycin. Alternatively, we can give suffixin plus azithromycin. Then if uh, this gonorrhea is complicated, 
as we've seen uh, when these women are having the tenosynovitis, the septic arthritis, and the dermatitis, including the fitzhag curtis syndrome, then we can uh, combine keftriazone plus doxycycline as treatment. Now, if we are having um, uh, the disseminated gonorrhea infection, we can still use keftriazone and azithromycin in these uh, patients, but we may have to you know, drain some of the mucopulent you know, uh, uh, fluid from the joint of these women. Now, when we look at chlamydia, the pathogenesis or the causative organism is the chlamydia trachomatis, specifically the DK serotype. Now, when we look at the discharge that we get from uh, chlamydia infection, it is usually purulent, bloody, and odorless. Then also when we look at how to diagnose uh, chlamydia, it's basically uh, by nucleic acid amplification uh, test specific for chlamydia. Then also uh, we do the polymerase chain reaction. Now the nucleic acid amplification test is the gold standard for uh, the diagnosis of chlamydia. The PCR will help us to you know, isolate the chlamydia trachomatis RNA or its DNA from the vaginal swabs. And it will also help us to differentiate between chlamydia trachomatis and Neisseria gonorrhoeae since we said these two infections may coexist in one particular uh, patient. Now, the special characteristics of this uh, chlamydia infection is that we said it may be uh, accompanied with some ocular uh, uh, infections as well as pharyngeal infections. And these women usually complain of postcoital bleeding. We may treat chlamydia infection with azithromycin or doxycycline. And if the, the gonococca infection is suspected, then we must combine azithromycin with uh, keftriazone and give to these uh, patients. And in pregnant women, we have to give azithromycin. Now, the next one we are going to look at is bacteria vaginosis. And as uh, we saw uh, in detailed uh, explanation, we said the causative organism is the Gardnerella vaginalis. And this uh, organism usually thrives when the normal environment of the vagina secretion is altered. And so they grow and they cause these uh, infections. Now, the discharge that we get from uh, bacteria vaginosis is usually gray and milky in color and it has this characteristic fishy you know odor which comes from the discharge now the diagnostic the diagnostic criteria for uh, bacteria vaginosis as we said is the using the amsel criteria and this amsel criteria to be brief over here is when we have the presence of more than 20% clue cells, as well as a thin white homogeneous discharge, you know, coating the, you know, the lining of or the walls of the vagina. Then we must also, you know, uh, have the presence of this amine odor, which is usually intensified when we add 10% potassium hydroxide. Then also the pH of the vagina must be more than 4.5. We can also use uh, culture to uh, isolate uh, the Gardnerella vaginalis uh, in this women. The special characteristic is uh, what I've just explained. We need to, you know, uh, have this. Uh, the clue test, more than 20%, as well as the positive uh, whiff test. And the positive uh, whiff test is what I explained as adding the 10% potassium hydroxide to intensify these uh, fishy uh, odor. And the pH will also be more than 4.5. Then we are going to treat bacterial vaginosis uh, with uh, metronidazole as well as clindamycin. Now, with trichomoniasis, the causative organism is the trichomonas vaginalis. The discharge that we get from the vagina is usually profuse discharge with an unpleasant odor. It is usually yellowish or greenish in color, and it is offensive. The patient may sometimes complain of, you know, acute irritation and inflammation of 
the area. Now, the diagnosis of trichomoniasis is the use of a saline wet preparation of the vagina uh, swab or secretion. Then uh, we can also do culture to isolate uh, trichomonas vaginalis. Special characteristics of trichomoniasis is that under the microscope, we find that this organism is flagellated. It is, you know, uh, motile. It is able to move because it has these flagella attached to its, you know, uh, uh, ends. And also it has undulating surfaces. When we add 10% uh, potassium hydroxide to the vaginal swab, the order that we get is negative. We don't get a positive order as compared to the one we find in bacterial vaginosis. And when we look at the cervix, when we examine the cervix, it has this punctate cervix, which uh, is uh, characteristically called the strawberry uh, cervix. And the pH is also uh, more than 4.5, usually uh, between 6 to 7 ranges. Now, we treat trichomoniasis with metronidazole, then we can also give tenidazole. And we have to make sure that we treat the sex partners of these um, patients. Now, the last one we are going to look at is monoliasis or candidiasis. And the causative organism is the candida albicans. But sometimes we may have recurrent uh, of uh, this candida albicans and in such cases uh, for example if the woman gets recurrence of candidiasis about four times in a year then uh, we uh, need to suspect that it is a non-albicans cause of uh, candidiasis and usually the causative organism of such recurrence is the candida glabrata the vagina discharge that we get is usually uh, uh, white cottage like cheese and so in an exam, if you are asked or if you read and you find white cottage-like cheese, your mind should go to candidiasis. Then we diagnose uh, vagina uh, candidiasis, usually based on the clinical manifestation. Then we can also do microscopy for uh, uh, diagnosing candidiasis, then also culture to isolate candida albicans. Then... The special feature is under the microscope, we may find the pseudo hyphae uh, or the branching hyphae of these uh, candida albicans. Then also we may find spores. And when we add 10% hydroxide uh, of 10% uh, of potassium hydroxide to the vaginal swab, uh, we may not get such um, uh, an, an intensification of the odor which comes from them. And the pH is always within normal between 4 and 4.5 in, in the uh, candidiasis. We treat candidiasis with topical azoles as well as nystatin and fluconazole. So this is all that I have for you. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye.